This program starts in five minutes. program starts in 2 minutes program starts now hi everybody this is uh, ravi satlam and i am here to speak a little bit about uh, my extended family the hyderabad runners so when i say extended family i actually mean it in a good way so a hearty welcome to all of you to the 19th edition of beyond the track at hyderabad runners uh, we've been promoting running as the primary form of fitness 
Um, but as we entered our youthful teens, we sort of hit an unexpected roadblock, the COVID-19. As a result of which, running has been restricted and also the socializing bit that goes with it. We all have been itching to participate in the various events that would have normally filled our running calendar. And we would like to know when we can start running in such events all over again. In today's edition, we are presenting three distinguished guests uh, who can shed more light on this. Uh, welcome to Kavita, Ramesh, and Kevin. Um, I'll quickly introduce them first. Uh, let me begin with Kavita Kanaparthi. She is the founder of Globe Racers and also an avid long distance runner and cyclist. She's adopted an, uh, an active lifestyle very, in her, very early in her life. She left behind an engineering career and added living by sport approach to all facets of her life. We'd like to know more about that. She says Globe Racers is her way of doing that. She has introduced and nurtured ultra running and cycling in India, introducing the various race formats and building the community from just one ultra runner to a team representing India in the 24 hour and the 100 kilometer world championships. Nilgiri's ultra and Bhatti Lakes ultra are amongst the popular races that um, Globe Racers organizes. Uh, that's okay. Moving on to Ramesh Kanjili Madho. He's a self acclaimed IT professional has been running for 20 years, of which the last 10 years have been just barefoot running. I run without socks, and I've been doing that for 11 years now, but with the shoes on. Well, anyways, he started running at the age of 30 to be active and shed his lethargy, and has 78 marathons in his kitty. Ramesh, I think there are easier ways to shed lethargy. Anyway, uh, we all have heard about Souls of Cochin. Ramesh is the founder of this running group in Cochin. This group also organizes the Spice Coast City Marathon. A lot of us have participated in, in that. And Wagamon Ultra Trail, which most runners know as the Ultra Trail Marathon with distances up to 90 kilometers. The group also organizes a special race called Mother's Lap in Kerala. Moving on to Kevin, uh, he's our third guest. He's a senior VP business and running development at ProCamp. We're all familiar with program events. Um, Kevin, by the way, is a three-time podium finisher. He has participated in 103 events in India and abroad. Kevin has over three decades of corporate experience and has built the finest brands in India, including ESPN, Star Sports, Walt Disney, and Viacom 18. So if you're a ma marathon enthusiast in India, it's quite likely that you've run the Mumbai Marathon. We all have. Um, it is Asia's largest marathon. ProCam International is the organizer of TMM, TCS World 10K, and other prominent races across the country. Kevin says nothing pleases him more than helping citizens be better versions of themselves and enabling charitable organizations garner maximum exposure and raise funds through ProCam events. Congratulations, Kevin. So at this point, I'd like Prashant to take over from me and rescue all of you. Prashant needs no introduction yet. Um, I'll introduce him as the current race director of AHM. We've been co-conspirators uh, during the previous editions of AHM, and he's a dear friend. Over to you, Prashant. Thank you, Ravi, for the nice introduction and introduction of our speakers. So yes, we've had great times uh, organizing AHM, and uh, this is what we are probably missing at this point of time. A hearty welcome to Ramesh, Kavita, and uh, Kevin. It's good to uh, have you people on board. Uh, in the talk today, though I would have preferred to meet you on the racetrack or uh, during one of the races, but uh, it's a bolt from the blue that we've uh, come across COVID and this is uh, where we are talking about running and not doing the running itself. So, uh, well, I think it's affected all of us uh, as runners or uh, as organizers of running events and uh, we, we still don't know what else is there to come. So, uh, let, let, let me start off uh, 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 with a little bit of uh, background of what, uh, as organizers, as race organizers, what we face to make sure that we have a very successful race. I think Kevin should be able to uh, give some inputs on that as to how uh, they go around uh, uh, preparing for the race and what is it uh, that happens in the background before we actually get the race to the public. Kevin. Hi, everyone, and a very good evening. Hope all of you are safe and sound out there. So uh, the 
the holy grail of uh, you know running in india the tada mumbai marathon we as organizers pretty much start planning the next edition precisely 12 days from the race day so the so 2021 precisely uh, started on uh, 28th of jan for the 2021 we started working on 28th of january 2020 so uh, there's there are pretty much uh, you know lots of uh, lots of uh, uh, characteristics that we need to bring in lots of learnings that we need to take on board lots of step ups that we need to do uh lots of valuable valuable feedback that you know runners like each one of you out there uh keeps giving us so there are a lot of factors that we have to put into uh, account for putting up a world class race and since we're working uh you know the race happens and starts and finishes at uh, cst which is again a, a world heritage junction uh you know it primarily adds to a lot of uh, it adds to a lot of dynamics and challenges for all of us but yeah to in order to put up a world class race we pretty much start you know 12 days after the completion of the previous edition so 2021 work has already started in jan so uh, that means it's almost a year of preparation uh, for the race in terms of uh, from the planning board to the execution absolutely because you know you need to have world class athletes you know you need to uh, take on board learnings you need you know the the city landscape the roads are changing you know every 3 months uh, we pretty much need to take the administrators and the city administrators their feedback into account and there are a whole lot of other things and then you know we need to keep the product fresh we need to keep it aspiring and and therefore there are a lot of step ups and innovations that we keep bringing in basis feedback that you know uh, our great runners uh, keep giving us yeah, and uh, i think uh, things would be a bit different for uh, kavita because uh, kavita has uh, more of the ultra marathons so not city based uh, uh, out in the uh, some of the remote places and there's a lot different uh, preparation that you would probably have to do kavita for the races actually um in some ways yes um but all that that kevin i echo uh, kevin's uh, sentiments here even for us it starts quite ahead um mainly so because uh, um you know the trails change every year it's like you, know, you have to clean the trails so the trails don't remain the same permissions uh, you know the local administration changes permissions you have to start up fresh sometimes uh, they have you running around almost till the day before the race even when you start 6 months ahead so in remote regions especially so many things change you know you don't have the same um, logistics team on the ground you know though you put up put them together much ahead of time things change um, the conditions change so drastically in remote regions that no matter uh, if we don't start as ahead as you know as uh, kevin is uh, talking about things don't go smoothly at all the challenges are slightly different but uh, they almost you know mirror everything that you have to do in the you know and in the cities but uh, we have had times where uh, an entire solar uh, factory was built by you know a well known <laughs> industry in india in the in our route in in the thar desert who would think in the desert route right so it takes you almost um, a uh, 6 months to fix on these routes because the remote regions you know you have to do the gps mapping and all that stuff and we went back before the race and the whole thing had changed whole landscape had changed the whole permissions had changed so challenges are you know uh, it's never the same so once the race ends we begin thinking about all the hiccups we faced and what we need to do we check with the administration if they're going to be there so all the challenges you know it's it's there but uh, yeah it's slightly different but they're all there so i guess uh, from march the whole scenario has changed and uh, all of us uh, we've had our events lined up yeah. haven't uh, unfortunately been to take them ahead mm-hmm. and uh, ramesh what's your experience uh, with the souls of cochin having your volunteers uh, and your uh, uh, staff ready for the races how have you been able to uh, hold on these months well obviously the, uh, the the scenario is the same as you just described and as both uh, kevin and kavita mentioned about uh, the 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 nuances of organizing a race 
whether it's uh, out on the road or out on the trails. I mean, we do both of it. Uh, so we know, we know both sides of uh, the, uh, the, the equation there. Uh, but the, the fact is, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I, I would like to quote uh, one of my least favorite people in the world, um, Donald Trump, when, when you say it is what it is. You know, basically, uh, you know, we are faced with a situation. Unfortunately, that something that we don't control, we cannot control at the moment, at least. Uh, and uh, we we basically have to uh, innovate in a way because we, you know, come up with uh, that's when these ideas of virtual races and uh, localized uh, events happen. Uh, the ideas come up, and some people implement them. Some people actually, uh, you know, wait on them as well. Um, but the, the fact is, regardless, um, the uh, a club like ours, like uh, you know Hyderabad Runners or Souls of Cochin, the uh, the key thing that we have to remember is our founding principle is to promote running or promote running as a means of uh, health. So you know we we untiringly do that, I and mean, regardless of all these uh, uh, events, uh, whether or not they take place. Uh, we try to get people moving, at least, uh, you know, in whatever ways we can, uh, even if it is within their apartment uh, or uh, outside um, with, uh, you know, all the all the COVID-19 guidelines uh, uh, accustomed to, I mean, uh, followed. But even then, the, I mean, yeah, uh, just like you mentioned, or just um, as um, it was mentioned earlier, some of these things actually have a problem when we think about uh, you know the the lack of uh, the, the the social interactions and the lack of the, the the group runs being you know mutually motivating and stuff but uh, at the same time there is another aspect to it which is you know people are finding uh, the need to be healthy more now so you actually see a lot more people coming on to the running scene uh, just trying to take it up as a means of health because they realize that you know there's no compromise on health uh, you know, COVID-19 is not uh, uh, differentiating rich or poor or, uh, you know, uh, any any uh, other bias except uh, the, the the healthy and the un unhealthy ones. I mean, that seems to be a, um, a thing that COVID-19 actually seems to, uh, <laughs> you know, discriminate on. So uh, maybe we should be on the, on the right side of uh, caution that way. So people have actually taken it up a little bit and that, uh, that has helped. I mean, we get our volunteers, get our uh, members to just inspire more people, motivate more people to get on the running scene or biking, whatever. I mean, some some kind of physical activity. And uh, that seems to be working fairly well. So, I don't know. So I guess, uh, uh, yeah, so I guess last uh, uh, few months, uh, though it's been a period of uh, inactivity for uh, most in terms of uh, events, but I guess runners have been doing their practice or as running groups, we would have been... Uh, encouraging our runners uh, uh, to get onto some physical activity or the other. Like at uh, Hyderabad Runners, we started off this uh, sessions of Beyond the Track seminars, as well as we had the HM, uh, the Air Hyderabad Marathon trainings, which uh, otherwise used to happen physically. We moved that on to the uh, virtually and uh, started giving online uh, sessions. So that was our effort to keep our uh, runners uh, together and to keep uh, the training going, to keep the momentum going. But uh, Kevin, I should ask you this. Uh, uh, your interaction uh, with uh, with the runners, you know, in the sense you were, you were ha your event was supposed to be TCS uh, uh, 10K in Bangalore was the first one to uh, to come in and which got postponed actually to September and then to November. Must have been very difficult to keep the runners engaged on one side. At the same time, with your staff being in a set of preparedness and uh, having to face these postponements, what has been your experience uh, through this? Okay. And I'm sure this is something that Kavita and Ramesh also will echo and echo loudly. Uh, Rajesh Vacha, uh, Mr. Rajesh Vacha also will echo it loudly. Organizers live with a heart attack almost on a daily basis. In that sense is, you know, there is always, you know, something unexpected that you really have to deal with, okay? And, uh, you know, it's pretty much uh, part of a DNA and, uh, you know, over a period of time, you know, thanks to learnings, we've been able to get over it. But this time it was something absolutely unprecedented. So, yeah, uh, while, you know, uh, TCS, the world 10K, the number one world 10K in the world uh, was scheduled in May, 
we had to you know pretty much a few weeks before the event we were forced to take the call we we thought you know give it another give it a quarter and a month more probably in september we would be good to go but then after when we found that you know things were spiraling out of control we said okay month of november but for a race organizer and you see uh, pretty much he has to take into account everybody you know in the in the chain the runners uh, the organizing staff the vendors the tech the sponsors the administration uh, you know there are so many things which uh, go into putting together a world class race uh, so there are there has been investments there are commitments there is manpower which you know pretty much like i said work happens pretty much in advance uh, so these are the calls that you know you have to look at it pretty much from an investment point of view uh, so you have to go ahead you have to make those investments and then you know uh, make an announcement for september so you again go back to the drawing board because you see athletes calendar athletes availability uh, uh, you have the broadcasters you have the administration everybody has to be aligned and then you know we feel that oh you know things are going out of control then we have to have a another safe date so pretty much uh, you know it's been uh, it's been affect it's it has affected everybody uh, in bangalore in themselves pretty much 12 to 13 weeks before uh, the tcs world 10k they actually have special they have special uh, you know programs for new runners okay uh, for fast walkers they pretty much you know have them uh, training for uh, 10 to 12 weeks for that so everything goes out of control you know everything has gone out of control but uh, i think the way runners organ the way the runners the trainers the the influencers out there the the inspirers for all of us out there have really gone and you know taken this their engagement uh, and holding their flock together holding everyone together to another level we have seen how people are training how people have engaged in technology so yeah i mean you know we are only going to come out of this stronger as a community as a running community as running india at every level now we would hope uh, this scenario doesn't last too long but uh, at the same time it's uh, uh, it it's required that uh, the community uh, groups well together or bonds well together during this time so uh, kavita your uh, ultra marathon events i mean ultra marathoners are a small in number as compared to the marathoners or the half marathoners but at the same time overly passionate and uh, very inspiring people so yeah. during the uh, during this time of the crisis how have you been able to keep them together or how have you keep been able to keep them along with your uh, 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 event planning uh, in mind uh, what happens uh, prashant with ultra runners is um i mean you know you have to run most of our races are like 100 kilometers and 100 miles and 200 miles and you know that kind of running right and uh, let's say the first race that we had for this year was in april it was just when this whole thing you know went for a toss so march 23rd everything was shut down our race was supposed to be april 10th so it was that close so everything was ready we were supposed to get on you know uh, travel to the location um around the end of march uh, i mean like you know a week after everything was shut down um so to tell a runner two weeks before the race that the race is not going to happen for which they have trained for six months so if you know as you know training for 100 kilometers is not going to happen overnight and these are hardcore runners and uh, if you have to run uh, 100 miles which is the longest distance we had uh, in the thar desert in april so you can imagine the heat so these runners have taken the time out in their calendars in winter months to figure out how they're going to train for heat so they have done crazy things you know they would do crazy things and they would wait and do all that stuff for 6 months and then 2 weeks before a race and i'm telling them the race is not going to happen psychologically there's a lot of abuse as an organizer i have to take so you know and and you have to learn to take it with a pinch of salt you know and because you understand you yourself a runner so you know you have done this and you know you know you have your train so and you understand the sentiments it's not just the financial aspects it's the psychological aspects they're really really bummed and they plan their calendars of training of racing so some some of them use this april race uh to go for a race like bad water in us where again it's another very uh if uh, some of you have uh, followed it bad water uh recorded um 
the record highs of temperature this year, anywhere in the world, 130 degrees. That was the highest anywhere in the world in many, many years. And they, they would have been running in that heat. So these races, you know, these races, uh, you know, so to tell, her, uh, to tell a runner two weeks before a race, race is not gonna happen, is, is hard, she's brutal. And that's what we had to do. And to keep them motivated after that to say, you know what, I'm gonna have the race in May or I'm going to have the race in June is um, everybody says, I'm not gonna do it because I'm gonna sit at home for a month and I'm gonna be able to run this race, right? So we had to come up you know, with a couple of things and though we took a little bit of time to kind of understand the virtual racing can happen. So you, you, know, you tell them, okay, fine, go out and run or you go out and do these push-up challenges or you go out and do these things. And it's all laughable for ultra runners. But you know, you're gonna have to keep doing, you know, do, do these things and tell them, okay, fine, I'm gonna give you a challenge to run 225 kilometers in 14 days, you know, as part of your training. So we have a race, uh, a virtual race that is called uh, Limitless Racer. So you go out and run 225 kilometers in a certain amount of time and that kind of a thing. But, you know, it's, it's, they take it very, very uh, harshly. You know, they don't, uh, they don't like that. So um, as Kevin was saying, you know, they had to postpone it twice so far. And he would have had to take the brunt of uh, all the runners, the organizers, the broadcasters and everybody. Um, but, you know, as an organizer, you, you, you just sit in your chair or whatever you do, you walk around or you, you know, fend, fend off that energy, the bad energy, bad energy that comes to you. And you make sure your runner is taken care of. You tell them whenever it's possible, I'm going to make this happen. That's the best you can do in this scenario. You know, you make sure they keep training. They keep, they, they stay uh, within the certain plans or whatever it is. And, and that's all I can, you know, that's what we have done as much as we could for an ultra runner's scenario. And I guess now uh, with all these uh, event cancellations happening and no end as such in sight, the people mm -hmm. have started moving towards virtual races. I think you've yeah. announced your first uh, virtual races from uh, September. Yes. And I guess uh, Kevin has one going on right now. Yeah. How's the response you see to the virtual uh, races, Kevin? Okay, so we look at, we look at virtual races a little differently. Uh, so I think uh, virtual races in India primarily have come a long way. Uh, 2018 were three events with three organizers. 2019 was pretty much about 42 with about 20 of them. This year, we've already, uh, you know, close to uh, 60 with about uh, 40 organizers. And I believe the number is going to probably uh, be closer to 100. And these are all virtual events. Uh, you know, some of them uh, very bad hygiene, very bad commitment because uh, medals and, you know, stuff like that, what was promised is not been given for whatever reason that the organizer feels fit. So virtual runs, are, you know, uh, are here to stay. And, uh, you know, we at ProCam also believe that, you know, you also need to uh, get, uh, you know, give an opportunity to runners who, who cannot be on the actual event and the actual holy grail on the race day to also give them an opportunity to be part of the event. Because we also see it is a great way to get also, you know, people who are on the fringe into, into the an active uh, lifestyle habit. That is one. Number two is also to raise money for charity. So uh, this year in Jan, we did a virtual run on the actual day of, of TMM, which is runners one. We had 3,300 runners which was geoblock and uh, in on 17th of may while the you know we were all going through covid this whole uh, you know uh, environment of covid and its restrictions on the 17th of may we we did a special initiative which was hope runs within which was to raise awareness for the covid warriors and also uh, you know have an opportunity to raise funds uh, you know for cso's committed committed to COVID relief work. And also it was very symbolic because for us, you know, everybody looks forward to that day and date. Okay, everybody's training so hard. And so we we felt that, you know, to have a special initiative. So the special initiative was called, was called Hope Runs Within to keep and uh, to keep the fraternity and all those runners who had, uh, you know, uh, looking forward to that day and date in the annual calendar. So currently what we have is uh, another great initiative for uh, 
basically to raise awareness and to raise maximum funds for livelihoods restoration. It is called Sun Peace India Runners One. It was flagged off on uh, uh, the 74th year of our independence, 15th of August, and it goes on till 13th of September. So this primarily by, you know, we have three levels of registration, but primarily the uh, thing is we've kept it so simple and so inclusive to have anybody and everybody, you know, my mom, my dad, my neighbor, my uncle, uh, pretty much pretty much can join the movement. All you have to do is to register. The registration starts at 99. You sync, even if you do not have an app, you can, there's a button, you just go press your button and you can log in your kilometers manually. So we have kept the system very simple. So what we are doing is primarily a movement. Uh, it is, uh, it's a movement that's, you know, lasting a month uh, and uh, the results are great. Uh, we've already got about seven lakh kilometers pledged. Uh, we got to be crossing a milestone uh, of 2,11,344 kilometers, which is the distance from Kashmir to Kanyakumari into 74 years of independence very soon. So we are very, uh, we are very happy that, you know, we are giving back to India, you know, we are when it matters the most, because uh, we wanted to raise funds, we wanted to raise awareness and, you know, ProCamp till date, and thanks to all our runners, thanks to all our corporates, we managed to raise till date over 17 years, 446 crores for charity, not a penny, not a dime comes to ProCam in any way, uh, in any way. In fact, it all goes from donor to the CSO directly, everything is transparent, audited, so this is another big wave that we feel that, you know, we have got to stand up and make ourselves counted and contribute. So, you know, in this time, in this pandemic, we thought, uh, what is it that we could do that could really create an impact and benefit the maximum? So that's the reason why we launched Sun Feast India Runners One. So it's more well, it's of a good, movement. Uh, it's good that virtual races are coming up. I guess it yes. keeps the running alive, but I yes. wonder if it keeps the runner spirit alive. You know, uh, so yes many runners... Yes and no, uh, you know, yes and no. Like I said, you know, on Independence Day, I believe there were 40 plus, north of 40 events that were happening, uh, you know, uh, dedicated to causes, dedicated to, you know, various issues. But yes, virtual runs are here to stay, but there are challenges and I'm sure Ramesh will, you know, has his, uh, you know, his own learnings on that front. There are challenges in terms of hygiene and checkpoints. In fact, I think uh, Ramesh's next run is coming up on uh, the Spice Coast Marathon is coming up in uh, December. So this is the time. Uh, probably he'll be in two minds uh, whether to go ahead with the physical run, virtual run. Ramesh, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, we we still haven't uh, finalized finalized the 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 format in which we'll do it because. Uh, you know, as of now, um, we are not able to even approach the, the authorities for permit permissions because you know, they, they they be like, you know, what are you what are you here for? I mean, it'll be it'll be such a uh, such a ludicrous approach for us to even uh, even ask them for a permission at this point for something that happens in December. So, uh, but at the same time, uh, we are preparing for backups, uh, and yes, virtual run is definitely an option. The, the thing with the virtual runs is, yes, uh, as Kevin mentioned, there are you know good ones and bad ones and, and everything in between, I guess. Uh, but the, the fact is people right now um, are, you know, trying to, try to find something for their, uh, their uh, keeping their motivation alive. And uh, this has actually changed the runner's behavior, the, the, the whole pandemic has changed the, the runner's behavior a little bit, I think, because I mean, I'm talking about um, people who are already runners, not not the ones who are actually on the on the fence, but people who have been running and who have been running races. Um, I think this has changed a little bit in that uh, they're not as crazy as they used to be uh, about running races. I mean, running races as in like, going to places and running races, but at the same time, they want something and they want something of a, uh, of a motivation to, to keep them, uh, you know, driving every day or uh, getting out uh, every day to, uh, to get their run in. So in that sense, uh, yeah, the virtual races are probably the, uh, the best option at the moment. And uh, we have been wondering about it. I mean, of course we have the, uh, the trail event as well which we are not sure what uh, kind of virtual uh, 
experience we can give for people because that's the, the whole experience of running in the trail is the experience that we can offer and if we cannot uh, offer that I mean, i'm sure kavita knows that really well i mean how can you offer a virtual run to a trail runner um, it's it's almost impossible but uh, then again it's something that we are uh, considering and we are uh, still pondering on what uh, the, the best options are and hope, hoping to announce uh, something soon especially about the, the december run, run uh, we will be able to announce something soon so you're organizing the virtual races has its own uh, set of challenges something little different from what we uh, uh, face when we organize physical races so kavita you've been betting quite a bit on the virtual races uh, for the coming uh, three or four months any specific challenges you faced uh, for putting up these races one thing is uh, motivation factor the other thing is uh, the the validity and uh, the sanctity of the data that is being submitted and and also what's being promised not being delivered um, you know um, on both the organizers front and uh, the participants front there are multiple challenges that we are facing and i think it's going to be important to kind of keep things simple in this uh, virtual space you know don't promise what you can't deliver do only as much as you know the participants can actually you know do without having to or feeling the need to kind of cheat and do all those things you know that so it kind of retains a bit of uh, keeps the you know the space clean and that's what we have been trying to do you know do as much as possible and if there are challenges you know address them and understand the patterns that will emerge um, you know kind of uh, take note of that and speak to other organizers as well we have also been active in speaking to other organizers who have been doing these things and uh, kind of trying to kind of uh, share the knowledge uh, you know from back and forth and understand what the challenges are how to deal with them and how to kind of understand uh, what the participants are expecting so what's happening is uh, in the, it, it's interesting in virtual space because the participants think um, you know there is nothing you're doing for me so you don't have to charge me at all and they don't understand that the business continuity is important for the organizers as well um there's one of the challenges that we have found that you know they would reply right to you saying you know doing anything you i'm i'm the one who's running i'm the one you know doing all the things and uh, why do you need to charge me this technology that we you know people had to invest in there is people still working for us that the business continuity has to you know, thought up thought through um so if i'm talking about charity so there is a component of the money that we raise go that goes to charity there's a component of money that that we raise we are actually giving to, giving to athletes as well so there's a lot of thinking that went into kind of creating this virtual running instead of just saying register you do whatever you want you submit the data to me and i'll send you a medal so instead of that what we have done is put some parameters put some interesting things into the whole concept whether it's uh, we actually don't do medals at all because you know globe racers has been doing green races all our races are um, extremely green races we don't have you know any um, non recycling you know non recycling we don't do use single use plastics we don't do more than one banner in the entire trail race um you know and um, you know we don't wrap anything in plastic and things like that so this year we decided that even our regular races even if covid didn't happen we were not going to do any medals in our races so we've been moving more and more towards that so we don't do medals in the virtual space so um you know we want we didn't i know we figured that uh, wrapping medals and packaging them and contribute to more ways we didn't want to do that so those challenges we face you know our runners want the medal the runners want everything and so we didn't want to do that so we kept it clean we kept it in terms of you know we um, we have an ngo we support couple of ngos that we have been supporting in the waste uh, waste space in the uh, what do you call it in the you know children education space and also uh, an ngo in uh, delhi that is dealing with uh, drug addiction you know that is has risen because of uh, the covid because there's no help there are no um, what you call it the you know aa is all these places which uh, help addicts they're not functioning right now so a lot of um, fall back on drugs and alcohol has happened so we're supporting one some of those and and some money goes to athletes who have, who used to uh, depend on prize money you know race after race race after race that used to be the livelihood so um, you know in those challenges those are the organizers challenges and to keep the participants motivated um, you know they can uh, we have created an fb live uh, program where runners can come together on fb live 
like right, right, right here, right, we are on Zoom talking about those things. So when runners are uh, partic running to, you know, invade in their own space, we have them uh, coming on live, talking to each other. So creating a certain motivation for them to participate. And so that's, those are some of the challenges, you know, and uh, I'm sure Kevin has heard a lot when they're doing the races in Major Lee. And we have another uh, race coming up uh, similar to what Kevin has talked about, uh, what we are calling the Earth Matters. Earth Matters matter. That's what we talk about, uh, you know, um, trying to circumnavigate the Earth. So, you know, basically the circumference is 40,075 kilometers. So what we're saying is every time the runners run around the globe 10 times, we're gonna fund an NGO that is taking care of the earth. So we all are coming up with things that uh, are meaningful, are trying to address a situation that the, you know, a certain seg uh, segment or a sector is facing. Um, and uh, right now, uh, um, uh, Kevin talked about uh, saving livelihoods through the sun race that they're doing. So we thought, you know, we need to address the NGOs losing CSR money. So through this, what we're doing, this starts November 1st and it goes on for 30 days. Anybody, you know, walking their child um, to the bus, you know, around the corner, going to the grocery store um, and walking, leaving their car in the garage, cycling to work, any miles, any miles are gonna count. So, and every time collectively 40,075 runners are going to um, run 10 times around the globe, an NGO project is going to get funded because they don't have CSR money anymore. Challenges and try to find solutions. So that's uh, one, one good thing is uh, virtual races. We've been uh, you've been able to incorporate uh, people of all age groups or all walks of yes. life. So yes. much similar to what uh, physical races uh, we've been doing. Yes. But uh, do you think there's going to be a movement towards uh, virtual races uh, per se, uh, or whether physical races will still high high find high. a place? Yeah, uh, so uh, whether you think there'll be a mass movement towards virtual races or you think physical movement, uh, physical races will still have uh, uh, some traction? Uh, what do you uh, see the scenario as? I think it, it's gonna be a hybrid model, uh, Prashant. You know, uh, physical races are not going anywhere. Nobody wants to stop high-fying their friends. Nobody is no, no, want to stop uh, having a cup of chai and the big hugs and the big smiles. Nobody's gonna want to stop that. It might take time to get to that situation, but you know, with all the restrictions, but it's, you know, physical races are gonna happen. But at the same time, I think virtual um, racing has definitely found its space and we're gonna see a lot of hybrid models emerge. Uh, Kevin, I think uh, you, you started off with a virtual race model in the TMM this year uh, for people who couldn't uh, make it yeah. there. And yeah. now you're staring at a scenario where you've announced a couple of races and virtual races are uh, coming in. How, where do you see people movement uh, going towards? Do you think uh, there'll be more movement towards virtual races? It avoids a lot of uh, uh, cost to people in a, in a way, uh, travel, accommodation and stuff like that. But do you think that's what the runners want or which way you think they'll behave? Okay, so uh, I think there are a few touch points that I would like to cover. Number one is, uh, you know, like any, any good product, any... Uh, altruistic organizer, any organizer that, you know, can bring hygiene and a few checkpoints on board, even for a virtual event will work, especially, you know, if the product is, if the, if the product is seamless, you know, you, uh, the price point is, uh, is very uh, affordable. The, uh, the tech integration is very simple. What we have done at Sunfeast India Runners One, it is so simple. So that is something, you know, the, the, uh, the, credibility of the organizer, the product, the, what is it standing for? Is it gonna benefit uh, you know, some section of society? And you know, what is the, uh, what am I gonna get out of it at the end of the day as a runner? So that is, that is one portion of it. The uh, virtual runs, I think uh, sooner or later, there will be a shakeout, okay? And you will obviously have the top 40% uh, who will who will kind of, uh, you know, moment the COVID dust dies down, the top 40% will, will continue. And then you will have the others who will join the bandwagon uh, of uh, virtual running. For us, uh, while, you know, we definitely have announced uh, the next uh, two events, which is the Atal Delhi Half Marathon on 18th of October and the TCS World 10K in Bangalore on 22nd November, we are fairly confident, of course, uh, uh, we are fairly confident of uh, holding these events. 
with a lot of strictures in place with a lot of uh, with a lot of measures in place uh, that we have working very closely with the administration would we like to do a virtual run for those who probably cannot travel for the event yes we will but at the end of the day like coke says you know uh, the classic cloak is the real thing uh, like kavita says you know you you definitely need everybody wants that exhilaration that bon homi that that thrill of start the thrill of finish so you know uh, in that sense uh, you know we all want it out there and uh, there will obviously be a limited number uh, given you know what the administration and you know uh, various numerous factors which uh, you know ramesh and kavita can uh, you know uh, uh, understand you know right from the 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 level amounting area that you have and you know uh, uh, what is how we can actually make it a contactless race you know how do we manage the expo and you know there are so many things that you know really go into managing uh, an event in in the pandemic uh, post pandemic environment uh, that we will get into so yeah we come 18th of october we are on in delhi uh, we are looking forward to uh, the administration and working with them very closely will it be uh, truncated uh, in terms of experience no the experience is going to be the same but will the size of runners the number of runners that we take on board for the actual event be less yes that will be there but the experience for the runners will be same or more that is procams way of doing that's it. interesting take even i would also like to know how you are going to be actually uh, doing it with the current uh, uh scenario with all the safeguards in place but just let me get kavita and ramesh's views on this before coming back to uh, to you kavita you wanted to say something on this yeah i was just you know uh, kevin briefly touched uh, on the topic uh, i think you know we are probably uh, seeing a lot of hybrid models emerge you know um, even the marathon organizers and uh, probably looking at you know um, having virtual races for people who can't travel that's what i wanted to touch base on you know probably localizing races for some time um in terms of you know if it's a race in delhi we have more runners participate from delhi and then everybody else probably is going to run virtually so there are a lot of hybrid models that are you know um that we can probably look at and uh, we're looking forward to the race uh, for sure kevin you know it's going to be you know interesting to see we are definitely we're looking forward to it and ramesh you know uh, you you know you want to say something uh, no no well i just wanted to add to that and say yeah it is uh, it is exactly how that uh, how you guys described that uh, things are probably going to pan out because yeah there will be a, a hybrid model that will evolve uh, that is applicable to almost all the races that we can see in the future at least for the immediate future so even if uh, the race uh, does get conducted uh, the uh, the scale with which it will be uh, conducted uh, has to be you know uh, based on what we know now uh, a lot less and uh, because of uh, the situation as it is but then um, uh, the uh, the experience that has to be shared uh, probably i mean can be shared as much as possible with uh, uh, with the virtual uh, uh, component as well the the challenge that we will have is uh, when we have um, you know when runners actually start expecting more in terms of uh, you know a, a virtual event for example like uh, prizes or uh, uh, any any kind of uh, accolades for doing it we we obviously cannot be I mean, there are limitations on what we can provide in that uh, that front because uh, there is validity issues and um, uh, all uh, uh, validation issues that we will have to go through so uh, there might be that is that's what i was referring to earlier that the runners behavior probably will will change a little bit in this because the expectations might be different i mean as uh, we go into this new model um, things will change a little bit from both the organizers and the runners and all the other stakeholders point of view because the the partners especially the sponsors uh, will see branding in a in a different way now i mean they have to there is no uh, you know roadside uh, uh boards that will get them uh, their uh, their free advertisements or not free really like sponsor advertisements and stuff like that so those things will change but uh, then again i mean there i'm sure there'll be more uh, innovative way of getting 
the, the brand message to people. I mean, I'm, I'm just talking about branded uh, races. Uh, but uh, regardless, I really hope, I mean, uh, having all these uh, different options out there, uh, I just hope that uh, running as an activity does not get hurt. I mean, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the fact that I guess, people are, yeah. I guess all of us would be hoping that, that running yeah. as an activity uh, keeps its popularity and yeah. uh, keeps its uh, uh, goodwill. Yeah. So uh, Kevin, as we, uh, we were saying, uh, when you go ahead with the October race uh, in, in Delhi, how are you going to enforce the safeguards or how are you going to make it, uh, uh, what, what is the COVID effect uh, on the race? I mean, you know, the reason why I took an extremely weighted pause because I really do not, you know, it's an extremely, uh, uh, it's a it's a subject that you know has got so much of science, and we pretty much work with World Athletics. We work with AIMS. We work with uh, you know race directors across the world. We're working very closely with uh, our own medical partners. We're looking at you know uh, what are the few races that have happened uh, in the recent last one month, and what are the best practices that they have had from there. So we are looking at everything. But uh, like I said, last year was you know 45,000 uh, participants uh, on the race day. Will that be 45,000 this year? No, you know it will definitely be a much smaller number. That would also mean that there would be a smaller number on uh, in the on the half marathon category, the feature race, uh, the feature category of the race. So there are there are a slew of measures at every stage. You know, starting with us, starting with the core team, starting with our subheads, starting with the volunteers, starting, uh, uh, starting with also you know the laborers, starting with the vendors, starting with the check system, starting with our communication. How much more, you know of uh, how much we can advise and educate up uh, our runners to also help us to uh, you know to give them a great experience. So it's a slew of measures. And uh, pretty much, uh, you know, uh, uh, me and my colleagues uh, in operations, we have been working very, uh, you know, very, very uh, intensively uh, for the last several weeks. In fact, it's I've been almost three months uh, to, uh, and we will continue to do so, uh, to have uh, an extremely safe race, okay, for everyone. Okay, because you know we know in today's uh, environment, anybody who gets affected, it it can be a little bit of a dynamic situation, right? That is one. Number two is uh, so we'll take all all the all the we'll try to err you know on the side of caution, uh, you know in a big way. Uh, we will uh, you know want our runners uh, to be safe. We will you know want their cooperation, and at the end of the day, on race day. It's not going to be the race experience, but it's going to be a higher level of a, a race experience for everyone. And, so I guess uh, at this time, organizers will also have to take the onus of uh, keeping the safety. So, uh, so as the runner, the runner also will have to make sure that uh, they keep their safety at least uh, till the COVID scenario uh, passes. Yes. So each one of us and everyone in the race, uh, all value chains, all constituents, runners, participants, laborers, everyone will have to play a very responsible role. And uh, also, you know, uh, this at the end of the day, all our training, whether it's indoors, outdoors, uh, you know, all the yoga and, you know, all the healthy food which you're going to have. Uh, also, it is also very important, I think, somewhere in life to have a goal. And, uh, you know, so uh, it's like Kavita very succinctly put it, you know, if because you have a goal, you train so hard and, you know, sacrifice and you know you will do whatever to hit that goal so i think you know uh, somewhere uh, you know mankind has always been built on you know having a goal having a dream having an objective having a milestone and we all look up to and we pretty much you know on a day to day basis week to week basis yearly basis in whatever way we always you know push ourselves and that's how man has progressed right so, you know, having events also in a big way, I think is going to pretty much uh, benefit everybody. So guys, a lot of questions have started coming in. Uh, so let's uh, take this discussion along with the questions. Uh, so a question for uh, Ramesh. Uh, 
uh, it's easier for you to organize uh, uh, or it's a question from karthik it's easier for you to organize a small race that is spread over two weekends rather than just one sunday so that you can play within the contours of uh, social distancing protocols you think something like that uh, will work well it could work uh, provided again uh, you know a, any format actually i mean i, I would just like to put a disclaimer and say any format could work provided all these guidelines uh, are uh, are followed and also the authorities comply i mean that is the key thing that we i i feel is the is one of the biggest challenges that we will be having uh, for a city race at least for uh, for sure um, because uh, you know if if we say if we tell the the local administration that uh, okay we are going to have this event with 100 people Uh, or uh, a thousand people, whatever numbers we uh, we come up with, um, as long as they are okay with it, I mean, we we might be able to do our side of due the diligence and uh, getting uh, you know the the guidelines uh, in place. But uh, the the biggest challenge is, I think, uh, the the fact that we don't totally control it. I mean, as race organizers, we don't uh, entirely control that that part of the equation. because there is uh, you know permissions required from the authorities that we may find until the last day that it's not there i mean we uh, we all have uh, been through that so uh, that is that is where the uh, the biggest challenge is i think so i guess it's also very important to have the government and the civic authorities on board uh, uh, in sync otherwise i don't think it's uh, but we can go ahead with the runs yeah and uh, kavita i guess uh, we with the kind of runs you have in different states you would be knowing how the governments have been reacting to such events what is your, what has been your experience in recent times uh, has a, has any of the governments been forthcoming encouraging for you to go or most of them have been like uh, stay off the runs so let's uh, finish off the covid thing and then take off the runs what happens uh, especially for our runs being in the remote regions there are smaller uh, facilities there let's say for the race uh, in uh, pokhran there is a very small hospital in pokhran and the administration there is already overwhelmed and uh, they take uh, you know after uh, i'm i'm actually waiting to see what, how uh, kevin is going to pull off uh, the october race in delhi and then i'm going to take it to my administration in delhi for the for my november race in bhatti so as of now the the administration is saying we're not going to sponsor your ambulance because we don't want to be responsible for spread so right so everybody is uh, you know different different places different locations we are facing different challenges they don't want to um, either sponsor it either they don't want to tie their uh, brand name with it and uh, so challenges you know um, it's it's easy to say put on the race but it's uh, you know to step back and understand all the challenges that go into it and even if one thing doesn't fall into place it's going to be very hard and to kind of answer uh, you know um, the question that was posed to ramesh quickly there to even organize races over multiple weekends we have to um, you know structure the finances in a way where you're spreading it over so many uh, the same finances that we receive from all the participants right so you have to you know kind of spread it over multiple weekends is that possible so all these things have to be kind of you know taken into consideration and it's good that we are actually talking about this today and the listeners the participants are hearing us say these things and probably we are not going to be you know um taken to task a little less than you know what we are being done you know what's happening today yeah, but as race organizers we face a cash 22 situation right. you don't organize the uh, uh, you don't organize the run the the images you are playing safe yes. you go ahead with the uh, with the run it's you're it playing can amount Yeah, yeah uh, amounts to instigate, instigating, or you know, you're not playing. Uh, you're, you're not keeping the safety of the runners in mind. Yes. So it's very difficult to uh, go this way or or that way. Yes. I guess virtual runs is uh, one compromise uh, which probably we uh, we are able to take at the moment. Mm-hmm. But then again, that brings me to a question from Karthik. Will the timings in the virtual uh, virtual runs count? because they are not verifiable if someone he writes that if someone has cycled slowly with his garmin and he uh, gives that as his run feed what do you do if you if, especially if you are giving prizes for the virtual runs kavita you should be uh, taking that uh yes actually you know um, there are ways you under, you start seeing the patterns emerge that we talk you know i talked about it earlier today 
so there are different parameters for running. You know, when you uh, hit running in your in a Garmin or a Sunto or any of the apps that you're going to be using, you know, um, the things that are you know logged in are different. You see the you know um, cadence in one, you know, then you see uh, steps in one, and that kind of a thing. You know, there are different parameters that you see. So you know, you can catch. You know, if you're looking closely, you can catch them. This is what we talked about, especially you know, for somebody who's just doing this for social media, you don't have to really worry about it. it is there, you know, uh, thing to worry about. If somebody is doing this for prize money and, you know, kind of logging in the wrong miles, uh, then you're gonna be able to catch them. If you know what a GPS, uh, you know, data, what GPS data looks like, and you're going to ask them for the GPS data, you can verify it. If you're gonna give them prize money, you are going to verify the data for sure. So, you know, and the other people who are going to just log their miles, get a certificate, put it on Facebook. It is their karma is all I can tell you. So we love to go, uh, devise new systems for the virtual runs, our own yes. checks and balances uh, go, go, going ahead. Yes, there is enough technology that you can actually catch them. You know, maybe they may get away with it in one event. The second event, especially you know, in, as in Strava, there's a way to flag those, you know, you flag it and you know, um, you, you can get it verified. So all these, there, there are enough technology you know things in place and if the organizer is not looking into those things and that is something i cannot comment on but uh, you know like uh, kevin talked about the you know how uh, the sanctity of things you know how clean can you keep the you know, keep the race and that is our organizer's responsibility and you know with technology most of us are trying to do that that's a nice take on it uh, kevin there's a question to you from uh, milin uh, do we what do we expect in uh, TMM? Just like the London London Marathon has decided to cater only to elites, is that what we look for in TMM going forward, or do we look no. for a full fledged the race? real thing? The real thing. The real thing. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And, start. Uh, sorry. The real thing. Start finish from CST. The real thing. Let's hope the scenario is uh, that way when we come up to TMM. Uh, yeah, uh, Ramesh has a question for you that uh, presently without the vaccination uh, in sight, we don't know how things are going to uh, move ahead. So are we looking at a hybrid model uh, uh, to be the mainstay for the next year or so, uh, where you have physical and uh, virtual runs with some kind of uh, constraints on the number of people who take part? Or what are we looking at for the next year? Um, so far, that seems to be the case. Because uh, like Kavita mentioned, I mean, there are some other possibilities of, you know, having localized runs, having uh, staggered runs and all that uh, to, to reduce the numbers. But even then, I mean, for a larger race, you definitely have to come up with like a hybrid model or something of, uh, something of that sort to, uh, to actually implement it within the next uh, one year. I mean, that's for sure, because we don't see at least uh, from, uh, from a, a normal runner's perspective, uh, we don't see a lot of development in the vaccine uh, uh, thing, uh, getting it to getting it to people. I mean, getting it to uh, you know all of us. So that might take a while, and uh, as long as that is not in the uh, in the schedule uh, that we have seen or what, what we see, uh, we might have to do a similar uh, uh, you know, ambiguous schedule for our races as well. So actually, which, may, which makes me think, you know, as voluntary organizations or organizations promoting running, uh, is it uh, is the onus on us to convince the governments uh, uh, to let us organize the events in a certain way? Or how, how can we get the government to look at it from our point of view, to go ahead with the events in a restricted way? What do you think we can do uh, on this? Yeah, I, I feel that we can do something. I mean, that definitely we can push it. We can uh, talk to people, and especially if we have favorable people in the government that, that would listen to us. Uh, you know, people, you know, if we find some officers who are, uh, who are runners or at least uh, fitness enthusiasts, we can definitely have a good conversation, a, a, a peaceful conversation with them. But unfortunately, as of now, I mean, the, the way I look at it, uh, right now, there is no question of a conversation even with uh, most of these people because they're all in the middle of it. I, I actually feel sorry to, uh, walk into a, uh, uh, an IPS officer's office right now uh, to to have a discussion about 
holding an event because you know they're they have their hands and every other body part full of uh, you know everything that they're dealing with right now and uh, it's it's unfair for us to actually even uh, ask them to consider a, an event um, that at least in uh, in here in Kerala in Cochin that's what our uh, sentiment is right now so that's why I we guess... are uh, waiting to see what happens uh, maybe in a month or so that's a fair point. I guess uh, the population of runners is what 0.5% or 1% of the total population. Yeah. And why would the civic authorities or the governments be thinking of that 1% when the rest of the population's uh, health is at stake? Yeah. So probably uh, we still need to wait for some more time to see how uh, all this pans out. Yeah. But uh, Kavita, do you think there are some international guidelines uh, coming in for holding races in uh, the present situation? Because the Helsinki Marathon took place a few days ago. And uh, like you mentioned at the beginning, uh, Tour de France is going ahead. Do mm -hmm. you think that, uh, there are some international guidelines which will come in for holding events? There are already quite a few guidelines, uh, Prashant, you know, and uh, to talk about, you know, using face, you know, the face masks, uh, the staggered runs, to social distancing, you know, uh, the start line, the finish line, the holding areas. Pretty much holding area has been um, asked not, not, people have been, uh, organizers have been asked to not have holding areas, that kind of a thing. There are a lot of, you know, um, conditions that a uh, race organizer can follow at the moment. And um, especially for multi-day runs, you know, uh, the 2D runs right now, if there are any cases uh, within, the, within the teams, you know, uh, two cases uh, over a period of one week, you know, they're going to disqualify the team. There are a lot of guidelines for each different kind of races that, that we have, so sort of multi-day races, um, you know, tours that we, as we call it in Tour de France and single day races, the plenty of guidelines, you know, it's going to be important to see how the local administration is going to allow us to use those and, you know, safely organize the race. A lot is going to depend on the ground realities uh, within the geographic locations. You know, if we even if we follow the guidelines, as the local administration is going to say, it's okay if you follow these guidelines and have the race. So that are the, those are going to be challenges right now. You know, as uh, uh, Ramesh is mentioning, you know, uh, we don't feel right that we go to a hospital and say, "Give me an ambulance for my race." Um, you know, those challenges have to be met with uh, a lot many more, lot much more reasoning. You know, why you're doing what you're doing to be able to kind of talk about it. Um, so that, that those are challenges we have to overcome despite all the guidelines. I guess so. Uh, each situation is going to be having a tailor-made uh, solution or yes. at least uh, will have to be dealt with uh, uh, differently yes. going ahead. Uh, Kevin, there's a question for you. Will the virtual uh, timing certificate be ac accepted for the physical runs in future? No. I don't think so. No? Not at the moment? No. I don't think so. Because uh, that's where most of the runners would uh, get their qualification from. And uh... so, uh, you know, I think race uh, across the country are uh, sensitive to this and uh, they will look at uh, this, you know, in a, in a slightly more holistic way. But uh, would virtual runs be uh, used as a qualifying certificate? Uh, you know, I don't think so. Yeah, I agree with uh, Kevin on that. You know, um, no matter what technology we can put in, until AI steps in and I can actually probably see so see the runner actually doing the whole thing and you know I end to end or something like that. Uh, until that time, maybe a few years down the road. For now, I would definitely say um, you know echo okay, Kevin's sentiments on this one. Um, yeah, please. Yeah, just just, just one point uh, on that. I mean, I think uh, New York, I believe, had a uh, had a virtual run uh, to be their qualifier, uh, sort of. I mean, it wasn't exactly uh, like the way we do it, but uh, they they had it for this year um, because the, the race was canceled. They had some uh, a window where uh, you had to have uh, run certain distance that uh, actually qualifies you for the for the race in twenty twenty one. So, I mean, that that's yeah, there. I mean, it's, with you, Ramesh, but that yeah. was also pretty much only for the top of the tire, you know, you yeah, know in true. terms of. So, uh, in that sense, is. Uh, See a virtual a virtual run is has is a different product and it's a different experience. Uh, yeah, you know you have your virtual uh, you have your virtual timing certificate. You will have your virtual bib. Some may actually courier it to you, or you could take a printout. You may have get a medal, uh, you know, uh, 
personalized non personalized courier to you so there will there would be a different level of gratification and you know for in that sense uh, celebration for a runner when he is doing a virtual run and uh, obviously if the stakes are there in terms of prize money etc then you know you are inviting uh, you know you are inviting you know other uh, other challenges for the race organizer i feel uh, uh, with the present scene virtual runs are more like a stop gap arrangement till the physical runs come back but at least it's given a ray of hope to people who can't travel for the physical runs or uh, who may have an issue later on so uh, if you're not being able to go for the physical run you might as well do the virtual run so probably you be, there might be a segment which will open up uh, for the virtual runs as well so maybe the post covid scenario we are looking at new realities where we'll have the physical runs and the virtual runs having uh, uh, going on at the same time and uh, uh maybe like what kavita said have local participation in the physical runs for the time being till we actually move out uh more out of this uh, scene i guess there is a small ray of hope i believe uh, with the unlock four guidelines that the ministry of home affairs has just announced they are allowing political religious cultural and sports uh, congregations from uh, 21st of uh, september but with a ceiling of about 100 people so at least if it started maybe Uh, we might look at uh, a bigger number uh, later on 100 so, people uh, kevin <laughs> for, for kevin 100 <laughs> is uh, not a number i think uh, kevin would kevin look at 100 only at things i think uh, you know there is always a beginning and uh, yeah. that is one number two is one really needs to look at it uh, you know more holistically and you know and you need to work very intensively with all stakeholders with the administration with the law and order with your medical partners uh, with the athletes and you know with the running fraternity uh, all out there all our participants so 100 Uh, like also we know today in a wedding when we are saying hundred uh, you know or fifty for a wedding we it's fifty at any point in time you know people also <laughs> like Indians also are learning to be intelligent you know they are yeah. saying okay morning fifty <laughs> afternoon for lunch fifty evening high tea another fifty you know trying to so so in the sense is you know it's a new it's a new environment it's a new order uh, we all have to embrace it. uh you know i salute the government at least you know it's a bold step forward from a 50 to 100 you know we're going to soon get there hopefully by october 13th for sure we're looking forward to it yeah yeah so let's hope with this ray of hope uh, opening maybe uh, we'll get a bigger uh, space to operate and more number of people participating in the events going ahead but, but we uh, also have to remember one thing prashant you know uh, economy is what is driving the opening up you know covid has not gone anywhere so that's one thing we all have to kind of remember also but 100 is a good number at least for bhatti kevin <laughs> so good news that's true uh, i think ramesh will be happy spice coast uh, is yeah. coming up by december and hopefully this number of 100 will uh, increase by then yeah, yeah. I so. so i guess all of us uh, embrace the new realities and go ahead with some hope that uh, we we get back to our uh, regular sporting events as soon as possible yeah and uh, Thank you guys thank you guys for coming and sharing your views uh, on, on this forum it's been lovely interacting with you and uh, i would like ravi satlam to come in now let me conclude the program here and let uh, ravi satlam come in with his uh, word of thanks over thank to you ravi thank you prashant thank you prashant thank you all thank you so thank much guy thanks for having us and uh, great perspectives and great views and great information from all of us everybody here Thank you. And thanks, Kavita, Ramesh, and Kevin. Thanks for your valuable inputs. Uh, thanks, uh, Prashant, for moderating today's event. Uh, so, just to sort of sum it up, uh, looks like virtual races are here to stay. Uh, virtual and hybrid races are here to stay. Physical will probably uh, slightly diminished participation with a slew measures can. I'm sorry. I think uh, we've lost uh, Ravi. Yeah. Yeah. So let 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 me let me take it uh, forward. Uh, let me finish a word of thanks on behalf of Ravi. Thank you, Kavita, Ramesh, and Kevin for coming here. 
it's been a pleasure having you uh, on this forum and hearing your insights because uh, uh, between the three of you you span a whole uh, range of events and uh, with the kind of passion you have for your events as runners and as uh, uh, organizers i think your views uh, hold a lot of uh, traction for us thank you so much for uh, coming on the on this forum and uh, thank you viewers uh, thank you all the participants and uh, whoever has logged in on fb uh, for this program look forward to seeing you again next week on beyond the track thank, thank you prashant thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. Thank thank runners see you all soon See bye you bye. all. Take care. Bye. bye.